No wonder why Rory didn't want to change his driver last week. And unlike all the social media clickbaiting their way to the top over the weekend, basically slagging off TaylorMade and their Stealth 2, ironically, and for the first time probably ever, I'm actually going to stick up for TaylorMade on this one. I mean, that's so slow as well. If that doesn't make you swing it slower to perfect your numbers, I don't know what will. Because apart from the driver that I'm going to show you today in the setup that I have, there's two factors of this story that I do find quite fascinating and which quite a lot of people don't realise. The first being so many golfers in this rat race to find more clubhead speed and find more ball speed, yet not thinking about, will I find more fairways? Because even though a lot of social media pages did a great job of shortening the Rory McIlroy clip when he was talking about the driver change. Yeah, I wish I didn't have to bet on a new driver. I wish I could just use the old one, but... Um... It made it look like, well, he just doesn't like the Stealth 2. But that's not what I heard. Would you want to change a driver on last minute notice just before a big tournament, regardless of if it performs better, let's say in all the numbers? Because some Sometimes drivers don't have to have a rhyme or reason. You could have a very odd flex of shaft. You could have a very odd loft of shaft. But for some reason, that driver seems to find fairways. The second interesting factor of this story is there is some notion for a lot of golfers that older driver faces lose their elasticity, lose their bounce over time, but especially for bigger hitters, especially tour players, hitting out in the middle constantly, hundreds of times at the driving range and out on the golf course, it almost does the opposite effect. Hence why you keep seeing stories of pros having non-conforming drivers. It wasn't the case when they were built and made for them, but over time, wearing down, and multiple hits out of the middle spot, that driver actually becomes faster. Hence why Rory had to change the driver last minute, because there could have been a possibility that it wasn't conforming. Luckily for a lot of us, that probably isn't going to be the issue as you have to swing it quite fast, or probably in my case, hit out the middle quite consistently. But there's probably a good reason why this information isn't readily available. Number one, it probably doesn't apply to 98% of golfers on the planet. And number two, it's quite a tough sale, isn't it? Your older driver, if that does apply to you, is potentially on the edge of breaking point. However, it's gonna produce more ball speed to club head speed ratio than a brand new one that you're about to get fitted for. Oh, she is gone. With that all being said, that number is the least important number when it comes to distance. Launch angle, that one, and spin rate is the biggest factor in getting the longest out of your driver. Not to mention the other big factor is finding a fairway, and this game is so psychological. You have to be confident standing over it, and it goes to show one of the best players in the world, arguably one of the best drivers of the golf ball, even with a driver built to his spec and close to the previous driver that he had in the bag, if you're standing over it and you're not as confident as you might have been with your older one, you are going to hit bad shots, especially if you're swinging it as fast as Rory does. And that's why I'm sticking up for the tailor-made Stealth 2, as it is always going to be an uphill battle. Trying to beat Rory's driver stats last season is almost going to be impossible, and no equipment on earth can try and gain that advantage of that psychological confidence. <laughs> This thing is an absolute monster. Sometimes when you find a golf club that works, it just works and there's no rhyme or reason for why that is. And with all of that being said, I found a stock driver for me that goes an incredibly long way. Let me explain why it goes so far. And ultimately I'm happy to bring it to the channel because it's not going to cost 550 pounds. Now I've hit the Stealth Plus before, but never in such a low loft, eight degrees, currently sitting at six degrees. And this will be very important, understanding why this driver is going so far. I also have it in a standard length, 6.5 hazardous smoke shaft. And as I'll show you prices down the right hand side, this is going for around 250 pounds. 
not to mention it's probably going to get cheaper as the year goes on. I have to say a massive thank you for Replay Golf for obviously supplying this driver setup for myself. Not to mention congratulations on their epic refurb that they've done in store and I highly recommend you guys go and check it out if you are local to their area. Now since being in the new studio we have yet to hit the green at 374 but after a few smooth swings whilst I was testing it earlier I don't think that's going to be an issue today and it's probably worth noting at this stage both of these drivers potentially would be able to do the same thing if I had a similar shaft and loft option both geared for that low spin shot that you're looking for a fast club head speed player. But sadly, I don't have an eight degree version in both of these heads. Now, I've been using a relatively low T length for the shots that you've seen at the start of this video. So let's change that up. Let's tee it up. Let's drop that launch angle. Let's get some drives out there. And hopefully you're gonna be amazed with how far this thing can go. Oh, that is a great start especially for the standard playing swing, 118 miles an hour. I haven't hit that kind of spin since the original Great Big Bertha Epic in a similar head design and loft, not to mention 350 yards for a relatively slow club head speed. Well, for me that is. Right, let's see if we can maintain that under 2,000 backspin mark if we ramp up the club head speed a tiny bit. Oh, that is hit. 122 miles an hour club head speed. Look at the carry on it. That is the longest drive we have hit in the sim and we're only three swings in. That spin rate is disgusting. I'm almost thinking this could be my new long drive driver for this season, especially one that I can hit straight. I mean, I haven't really got that bad a dispersion with it either. And this setup is just perfect. Well, for me at the moment. And for everyone commenting, yes, I did see Alex's video that he posted the other day. And welcome the challenge with open arms. Great player, great guy, but I think I've got a new weapon. I mean, that is off the heel as well. I mean, that's supposed to be high and spinny, but I've still got an easy 320 out of it. Oh, we're going to hit the green today. We're going to hit the green today. Oh, that could be the one. That could be the one. Get up there, you beauty. Three, seven, seven. PB's been broken all around the place. Now I must exaggerate why we're seeing the numbers and the distance we are. It's not the carbon face, but because these numbers are so close together, 16.8 degrees launch angle, I'm hitting up on it by 10 degrees. That low loft and X diff shaft is making a huge difference. Hence why I'm getting 1300 backspin not great for dispersion, boys and girls. This isn't your gamer if you do swing the club at 115 plus. But if you just want outrageous distance, that backspin and that launch angle is mwah. Right, enough playing about. We're gonna hit six flat out shots to get on that green. We're gonna mark them in red. Let's see dispersion of all six. And let's see how far we can hit this thing. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a good start. 128 club head speed. What was the ball speed on that? 186. Ugh. Sadly, that is not going to be the one. Big miss hit. Still good average. 127 club head speed again. Oh, that's high toe. 128 club head speed. If the spin rate is good. Oh, it's gonna to spin too much, isn't it? Get up there. Oh, it's on the front. No, we nearly did it. 185 full speed. 368 total. Oh no, that's ruined my numbers. That tight dispersion's gone. 
Oh, that was hit well. 129 club head speed. What was the ball speed on that? 185 again. Just missed the green, 360 something. Right, 130 club head speed coming up. Nope. There's my six. I mean, I know you can only see five because we hit that massive duck hook. That's the issue when you have backspin that low. Right, 10 minutes till my lesson gets here. Let's be having you. Oh, we're close. We are close. Oh, if the spin's good. I mean, that's so slow as well. What's the spin rate? 1699, that might be it. Get up there. Get up there. Oh, we've hit the green. Milestone achieved with one of the slowest swings. If that doesn't make you swing it slower to perfect your numbers, I don't know what will. 250 pounds second hand price, eight degrees, stealth plus smoke has the shaft, is currently on the top of the leadboard at 376 yards. Let's see if I can find a better alternative in the next coming weeks. Guys, if you like this video, you might like this one up here on the left-hand side. See you guys there.